getting paper on these player haters old news money on the other line so i'm not gonna hold you money on the other line so i'm not gonna Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another edition of I'm Not Gonna Hold You, Man. It is your guy, Scott. It is Monday, October 23rd, 2023. Uh, it is time for yet another edition of the show, man. We've got a lot of things to kick off. I got two announcements to make in a minute. We're going to do that as soon as I finish uh, my sound off, man. But uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Barbara Scott. On Twitter and Instagram, you can follow the Barber's Chair Network at Twitter on Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com backslash Barber's Chair Network. I'm going to get to that in a second. Got some good news for Patreon subscribers and future Patreon subscribers um, about that. Uh, and, of course, um, you can follow everything Barber's Chair Network on all the all the socials, everything like that, man. So we appreciate y'all. But I'm going to start off with my sound off, man. We are officially, it will be officially week eight as soon as this Monday Night Football game wraps off tonight, which will be in the Bay Area between the San Francisco 49ers and the Minnesota Vikings. We previewed that game on Friday, and that is available on the YouTube right now if you want to check out our picks and previews for that game. Uh, I say this as a Chicago Bears fan, and I say this to Chicago Bears fans in general. It is way too early to be talking about draft picks. As I look at my phone right now, and I look at the amounts of the look at the standings across the NFL just in the first seven weeks of the season, we've got at least one, two, three, like seven or eight two win teams. We've got one one win team, we've got one team in the Carolina Panthers who have no wins. There's a lot of ways this thing could go over the next uh what eight, nine weeks of the of the season, man. I think it's time to uh you know pump the brakes on that. We all know about the whole Caleb Williams sweepstick. Everybody's trying to get this guy who's one of the best prospects we've seen in, in college football in a long time. And especially if you're a Bears fan, of course the Bears haven't given you much to talk about on the field when it comes to the actual NFL product, but a lot of things can happen before uh, the end of this season before April, late April, which is six fucking months away when it comes to be talking about the NFL draft. So I just think everybody just needs to take take a one week at approach when we get a time approach when it comes to this, because we don't know. And if, if we'll talk about this later in the show, but as a Bears fan, I, I, I care about the draft, but I don't really care about the draft at the same time. So. I need everybody pump the brakes on that. Worry about the stuff on the field. And honestly, we don't even know 100% what the full uh, draft uh, thing is going to look like because a lot of these quarterbacks have been having ups and downs. And I'm not saying that Caleb Williams isn't going to be number one. I think he's a consensus number one, no matter if he continues to play is, is uh, you know, inconsistent has been playing the last couple of weeks. But let's just pump the brakes on that one, man. So uh, let's bring in the crew. We, we Let's bring in the crew and, uh, you know, get this party started, man. Uh, I've got uh, Mikey and Dante in the building. What's going on, y'all? No nah, shit, bro. What's good? What's the word? I am I am doing as, as best as I possibly can right now. You know, we got a lot of stuff going on. It's uh, it's a lot, a lot of things happening, man. Uh, did y'all have a good weekend? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I barely remember what happened, so I would say it's pretty good. It was pretty. That's always a good guys. weekend. Sometimes you don't know what happened. Yeah, I just know I had a good time. How was Mikey's weekend off? <laughs> Shit. Right, 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 right. Man, that's exactly what it was. I was off D and D. I was just watching sports and chilling and taking advantage of a little rest time. Definitely, man. That's always good. I did a little work in this week, probably more work during the weekend than I usually do. But for the most, I had a nice little chill weekend, man. This is uh my 35th birthday is coming up on Thursday. So I will be doing a lot of celebrating this week because uh where we from, you know, a lot of niggas don't get to see 35. You know, a lot of niggas. From the south side of Chicago, Chicago in general, don't get to see 35. I'm not a major birthday person, but I'm gonna enjoy myself this week. This week, so we got, I got some stuff going on with that. You don't got the we'll you don't good. got the birthday countdown going up. No, hell no. <laughs> I, I, no, hell no. I'm a grown man. I will not be doing that. It's like you know, it's only the women. Remember when you were in high school and the women would have like the dollar on their shirt? Like if you was yeah. a nigga doing that shit, you need your ass whooped. Like the, right. The, the, what 50 say it's for the bitches, my nigga. Like that, that's what that's for. You know what I'm saying? Um, but now I'm gonna be doing some 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 stuff this week. Should be fun. Uh, I'm doing a Clippers home open on Wednesday. Uh that should be I, I, I honestly don't even know who the niggas play. Are they playing the Blazers? They playing the Blazers. So I'll be able to see Scoot Henderson, that whole new Blazers look out. Hopefully Kawhi and PG can stay healthy the entire year. So I won't be driving downtown. To see motherfucking uh, T Man and shit, Zubak. <laughs> yeah, Zubak. No right. offense to them niggas, but you know I don't want to be feeling like dealing with that shit. And then Sunday, of course, the beloved will be in town. Bears, Chargers, Sunday Night Football. 
So I'll be doing. I'm really just looking forward to that SoFi spread. I heard it was elite. So that's what I'm going to be looking forward to with that. But uh, I'm just got a couple of announcements. One is kind of like a, a announcement to an announcement. So there's going to be a lot of Patreon exclusive content from I'm Not Going to Hold You that's going to be dropping starting November 3rd. I will be having a little, tr- not even a trailer, but like a video that'll be dropping on Friday that will explain everything in detail because it's a lot to break down, but it'll explain it in the simplest detail possible. So, uh, and I'll also be sending a video to our current subscribers. If you are a Barbershare All Access subscriber, which is $10, uh, then you're all good to go. You all good to go on everything you got going uh, because everything is going to be coming to you. Uh, so look out for that on Friday. Going to have more news about that. Now, another announcement we teased on Friday. I'm going to talk about it again. We got a new segment on Barbara's Chat Network for I'm Not Going to Hold You. It's called Cousin Dan. Yes, that delinquent we see in the middle with those two elderly police officers is my cousin. Uh, my cousin Dan, as y'all know him on Twitter, Dan underscore, underscore glorious. He's one of the most ridiculous human beings I've, I've met in my life. He is, he has, uh, very he he believes in the takes that he say and i think just from the time that you know when i see him during the holidays the conversations we have offline you know he has a he i was like you know what this will be something for the public that the public needs to see um as far as content wise so dan will be joining us starting this friday each and every friday he'll be talking about what he feels has been going on in the sports world during the week man so uh stay in tune for that starting this friday man so um let's let's just get right into it let's just get right into um, the first topic of the show today. Um, I actually probably should have queued up the rundown. That'd have been smarter, but I forgot about it. So whatever. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we're gonna talk about the top storylines from the football weekend, and not just the NFL, but also college football. Let's talk about the thing that happened last night. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles uh winning a big game, thirty-one to seventeen, over um two Uso, as I like to call them, and the um. Miami Dolphins, who was just announced that the Miami Dolphins will be the in season hard knocks team, which I'm just glad the team Great that we day. actually give a fuck about. Um, because I think last year they had the Cardinals or some shit. Was, like, I, I, yeah. I, I, I don't care about them niggas. Yeah, yeah I think a, it was that's like a great that, pick for the midseason joint. It was like Cardinals and Colts. I think they did two Card- teams last the, year. The Colts wasn't the Colts was the year before. The Colts wasn't oh, bad okay. because they went they 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 didn't make the playoffs, but they went up to the last game. So at least that had a little bit of intrigue. We knew the Cardinals weren't doing shit last year, and then towards the end, Kyler Murray like there's no personality on there. There's personality with the Dolphins, man. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, they got uh not really destroyed, but they lost last night, 31 to 17, to the Philadelphia. Um, Eagles, man, if you look at uh, just from the stats of that game, this was a pretty – it was really one of those hard-hitting type games, man. Jalen Hurts uh, hasn't officially beaten the, the allegations that we were talking about on Friday about him being inconsistent, but he went 23 of 31, two touchdowns, one ridiculous pick six. But I think the story here today is uh, DeAndre Swift, 62 yards. A.J. Brown with his fifth straight um, 100-yard receiving game. He has uh, 10 receptions, 137 yards to touchdown. He was huge, but the defense was huge. You got an uh, interception from uh, Big Play Slay. That defensive line was all over to him, man. So, And then they got an even bigger addition to their defense today with them trading uh, for safety Kevin Byer from the Tennessee Titans. I don't know how Howie Roseman keeps doing it. He's able to get these all-pro players for pretty much pennies on a dime, man. Uh, before we get to the actual game, what do y'all think about this trade for the Eagles? Uh, I think it's a great trade. Like you said, he's been able throughout the years to find great value and get key pieces into his team. And one of those teams, when you are a Super Bowl contender, you can make these type of moves. It's not a move that a team that's, you know, not really threatening for a championship should make or would make because you never know uh, <clears throat> what you could uh, turn those uh, that I, those assets into. But when you're a team like the Eagles, it's like, OK, we're here now. We want to keep going. We want to get back. So now we're going to bring in, like you said, these all pro players. And I think a lot of it is like a lot of these GMs, bro, they I don't want to say they don't try, but it's like they're not picking up the phone. They're not picking up the phone and making these calls and seeing, you know, what it takes to get a guy who, you know, clearly with a team like Tennessee, that's probably going to just tear it down. What can we do? What can we do for this? And he makes the calls and, you know, he's he's been on, on point for Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think it's huge for them. I think, you know, going into the game when we were talking about our preview the other day, I mentioned how the Philadelphia secondary was kind of susceptible to the big plays. I mean, we know Tyreek Hill is Tyreek Hill, but he still had a big game yesterday performance wise. So when you have the defensive front that you have with, you know, Jalen Car- uh, uh, Jalen Carter, with Fletcher Cox, with Jordan Davis, when you're, you know, when you're able to get that pressure, 
up front, you know, having a pro bowl safety, inserting him into that back end, you know, especially when you, when come down to the playoffs, it's the teams are going to definitely try to throw on them. So I think it was a huge pick that we got to investigate what's going on between Howie Roseman and the Titans. He might have some type of information going on them because he continues to deal with them and continues to, um, continues to to come out on top with it yeah it, it kind of feels like a little bit like the the titans are the eagles like uh down south uh minor league team like hey yeah we gonna give you niggas aj oh uh, we see you had problems covering the cheetah last night uh so how about we give you a safety who can take care of that so here's kevin Bayard. i mean i think it's a great trade for them i think the eagles i that to me is the model of what a great organization is that's something that well, as a Bears fan, I'm ridiculously jealous of. I love aggressive GMs. I love GMs who don't give a fuck about spending money. I know I love GMs who know when it's time to, you know, uh, cut ties with, with certain players. That's exactly what the Eagles done. That's what they've done since uh, Howie Roseman has been there. It led to a championship, led to a, a Super Bowl appearance last year. And they saw that even though, yeah, we we only, what, they were six and one now. We see the, the problems that we have on this team. We're not just going to keep playing and just hope that one day it gets better. We're going to go out there and change it. So, I absolutely uh, love this deal um, for the Eagles, man. Uh, real quick, I forgot the advertisers beginning. Pavy will be joining us in about 20, 25 minutes of Hoops and Brews. He'll be joining us uh, to talk about the NBA because it is NBA week here on I'm Not Going to Hold You. Homie Big Walls will be joining on Friday. But Pavy will be joining us in about 20, 25 minutes to talk about the season preview in a minute. But let's talk about the actual game from last night, man. Um, do you feel like – because I feel like we said this when we previewed the game on Wednesday, like there's a – not Wednesday, on Friday, but there's a way to play the Miami Dolphins if you're more physical with this team, that you should be able to uh, uh, beat them. Do you think that they found a way to, you know, uh, I won't say found a way to stop them, but kind of like, you know, put on, on, on film. They're like, yo, this is – if you play physical with these guys consistently and you get them outside of that nice tropical weather in Miami that you can beat them, or this was just one of those games that – you know, Miami didn't have the best game. You can even say the officials. It was a couple question question calls last night. What do y'all think about, you know, what the Eagles game plan was? You're on mute, G. When you have a team that, you know, is so reliant on speed, that physicality can knock them off their game. And uh, I think this is now, what, the <clears throat> second time where we've picked Miami to go up against, you know, another playoff team and make a statement, and they haven't done it. Well, at least I've picked them. And so um, I think now I don't want to necessarily say it's a formula, but it's one of those situations where you have teams where you beat the teams you're supposed to beat. And with a team like Miami, they're usually going to do it on, in pretty you know dramatic fashion because they have the speed and they have the scheme that a lot of teams just can't stop. But when you come against these uh, playoff teams, they're good on both sides of the ball usually. So they, they can scheme the same way you can and, you know, try to take certain players out of the game and force you to do things that you aren't comfortable doing. And that's what the Eagles did. So um, I wouldn't say that they put the game plan out there. I think it's something that's already been known when you have these teams that are so reliant on, you know, borderline trick plays and motion and all that other shit. People go punch them in the mouth and then it's, it's a completely different game. Yeah, I agree. The number one thing that the Eagles did from the jump was they took away the running game. Um Although the Miami Dolphins don't have it like an elite running back room, you know, Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson and them boys, they still took it away, e took it away rather easily and early. So like Dante said, that takes away the surprise element of, you know, the running motion and everything you could do in the passing game. I know they were missing some people on the offensive line. There were questionable calls, but I, I, the, the only way we can describe them right now going through the season as we go into week eight, is it, is they're bum slayers. They haven't beaten anybody yet. If you look at their resume, yes, their offense is electric, but when it's only against so far, it's only again been against uh, some of the bottom feeders in the league. You got the Panthers who haven't won a game. You have the Patriots, although the Patriots had a great win yesterday. That's kind of what you expect in a division game. So you got the Patriots. You got the Broncos. They beat a bad Chargers team. So I'm not really sold on. I'm not as high as a, on them they as I the was last week. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm not. I'm yeah. I mean, they put seventy on them. So I'm yeah. not as high on them this week as I was last week. But I'm just gonna table the discussion and we'll see. And I believe in two weeks they got Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, and that that's gonna be the ultimate test for them. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that, man. Uh, 
I feel like this this is why the NFL is such a week to week league because I was very high on this team not even three days ago. I was like I picked them to win this game. I thought their offense would be a little bit uh, too a high octane for a, a Eagles defense that hasn't been bad this year, and I feel like they've gotten real real good the last couple of weeks. Actually, I give Sean Desai a credit for the way they've changed, and it also kind of shows you just how bad the Bills are. But we're not going to get into that again when it comes to uh, actual when you have actual uh, players who can actually make your system be better. But I do think that I don't know if I'm ready to call them bump slayers, but they they definitely on bump slayer boulevard with the teams you just you just listed, Mikey. None of these teams are good. You got a team in the Chargers who should be good. But how many fucking times are we gonna say that about the Chargers? It's just not a good football team. And so I do feel like they've left a lot to be desired. Yeah, you can say that they're still waiting for Jalen Ramsey to come back. Xavier Howard didn't play last night. But this the the reason they lost was not the defense's problem. The defense that wasn't the reason they lost. It was the offense had issues. Um, that pick in the end zone that two or threw, he threw a fucking BLT, just floated in the air to to big play slay. I mean, it was just one of the, one of the weakest balls I've seen in a minute. Uh, and then there was another one. Tua made a great pass, and if uh, uncharacteristically, Tyreek Hill just bobbled it in the end zone. So you have those plays they left on the field. So I do feel like they left a lot to be desired. I won't know if I'm gonna call them bump slayers yet, but. I do got to see them get a big, get a big victory before I'm able to crown them as one of the elites in the NFL. We we have no questions about their offense, but can they be a complete team and win games? Like you just named uh, Mikey, they got a game coming up not this week, but the week after in Germany against Kansas City Chiefs and, and the defending champions, Patrick Mahomes. A game that I'm probably gonna miss the great majority, if not all of it, because it comes on at 6:30 Pacific time. And me waking up at that time on a fucking weekend is just probably not going to happen. But that's a big matchup for them to be able to go out there. And even though the Chiefs have been up and down, they're still the Chiefs. They're six and one. And you can go out there and beat a team like that. Then you're saying something. So I, I got to I got to see a lot more from from the from um, the Dolphins, man. But let's go go on to our next storyline uh, that's happened from this week. Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, they went in there. And this is a game, Mike, you said you should have bet on. I know you said it, said this in the group chat. And you said, I think you said on the show on Friday that you were thinking about uh, betting uh, on that game. You got the Ravens won 38 to 6. Um, Lamar Jackson went 21 of 27, 350 yards uh, passing, three touchdowns throwing, and he had one rushing. Uh, I feel like this game in general is kind of what you – I, I, as much of a critic as I am of of Lamar Jackson, I feel like this year has probably been a stronger passing season, and he has gotten better and better. He's been putting up the numbers. A lot, a lot of it has to do with better uh, wide receiver options that he has. So that has a better offensive coordinator. You know, they, they got rid of uh, you know Roman last year. You know, um, brought in this new guy. But I think that the issue from the last couple of weeks was consistency. So I feel like this this game right here is the model of what you want to see on the Baltimore Ravens uh, going forward. Can their offense click like this every week? We all know their defense is good. The defense has been good since the fucking franchise moved to Baltimore. I can't even remember a time where the Ravens ever had a bad defense. They've really taken on the personality of a Roquan Smith. And I feel like Roquan is, not to say that Chicago wasn't a great city for Roquan, because Roquan was great when he was here, but I really feel like he's taken on the personality of Baltimore and Ravens fans, and they kind of feel like, not that he, he, I feel like he was a leader here, but he was also when he when he got drafted, he played with the Khalil Max, the Akeem Hickses, you know, guys like that who had been around for a minute. So yeah, when they left, he was de facto leader, but it's like he got there last year midseason, and they just rallied around him and took his personality. So if they can go out there and and, and beat on a team who we were just talking about could probably spoil an NFC Championship rematch in the Detroit Lions, if they can play like that every week, they can be a problem in the AFC. And I think if you're looking from it from a Lions perspective, I can see they lost by a couple points. But they got they got their fucking ass whooped. And I don't want to overreact too much on that, but that's something that makes you want to kind of you know question the Detroit Lions a little bit. Yeah, it's 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 kind of if we go back to, to Friday's show and you go back to the review, I I called it exactly how it played out, minus it being a, a massive blowout. But that Lions secondary is susceptible to being got, and I thought Lamar Jackson would have a big passing game, and, and he did. And it was it was out of hand early. Um, Lamar Jackson was my MVP pick. I think he might be the front runner now. Let's see if he can continue to, you know, to throw in the air and continue with Zay Flowers and, and Mark Andrews. We already know what Mark Andrews is as his uh, – as a security blanket. But, you know, for the Lions, though, the Lions are still having a great year. They started off 5-1. and one. 
I think this is one where it happens. It's the NFL. You know, we look around the league and look at last week, the Browns get the Niners and the Jets get the Eagles. Yesterday, the Bills, you know, lose to the Patriots and, and Mac Jones is throwing game winning, you know, touchdowns. So that's just the NFL. It's a week to week league. I wouldn't really worry about the Lions right now. But when you look around and you see the Eagles, right, the Eagles won a game and what they do. They got off the phone. They got out the locker room and they went and they got on the phone and they went and picked up some secondary help. The Lions need to be on the phone and start calling around and seeing who's available so that they can plug into their secondary because we know that they're stout on the O line, D line. We know what they can uh, what they can do offensively, but come 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 January, you know. Who, who's lining up against A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, and them boys? Right. He's lining up, we, we line up against Debo, uh, right. you know, uh, Ayuk, you know, so Kittle. So, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that, too. And before we go to Dante, I just want to say this real quick about Detroit. Even though we know Aiden Hutchinson is a beast, but I'm concerned about the rest of the niggas on that off, on that defensive line. I feel like he like he's been the only one who really getting consistent pressure, and that's something I feel like they need to uh, probably take advantage of too. Because if you're the Lions, you're in a shit division. You know what I'm saying? You you don't have to worry about the Bears. You don't have to worry about the Packers. You don't have to worry about the Vikings. All three of those teams got two wins. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to be a factor. You're going to win the NFC North. Every move that they should be making should be preparing them for playoff football, and they need to shore up not only the secondary but get. Aiden Hutchinson, more help out there if you can. And I know, uh, you know, D linemen aren't available at the, the deadline like that. It's probably the second most valuable position after quarterback, but that's something I would pay attention to. Yeah, definitely, bro. I think with Detroit, like I just said, it's similar with Miami. These new teams, these young teams that are uh, <clears throat> new to the playoff picture, they want to take these whoopings, these ass whoopings. And you see teams like, like a Philadelphia and, in this case, like Baltimore, really letting them know, like, you know, it's levels to this and y'all not really ready yet. And so um, I agree with the Lions defensive line. Aiden is Aiden. He's a problem. But you're going to see, need to get him some help. And uh, just another further proof that it's a process. I know we get excited about teams real fast and we want to say, oh, they next up or oh, they going to do this, that, and the third. But it's still, you know, it takes time. And so with Lamar, like you said, we just he's doing what everything we wanted to see this season. I know he started off uh, rough in game one, but he's been great passing the ball as his receivers have gotten healthy and started to come back. And so the sky, I think the sky's really the limit for him. And that's a guy who uh, I I forgot, but I'm pretty sure two of us picked him to go to the Super Bowl. But um, he's showing you why they should be, you know, one of the Super Bowl favorites. And like what you said, Roquan, um, he's he's obviously Ray Lewis is much more vocal, but he's in that mode of just amazing linebackers. And uh, he's been great in every game, essentially every game he's played since he got to the NFL. And that's what the Bears and now with. Baltimore. So, you know, when you have a centerpiece like that, although, you know, the Bears didn't want to build around them with the amount of holes they had, it made sense for a team like Baltimore. That was the perfect move to make at that time. And it's paid dividends. Yeah, I, I agree with, with everything y'all saying about that, man. I think this is, this is, uh, to me, it says a lot about both the teams. Like we saw what, what Baltimore can be. And we saw the Detroit like, okay, yeah, you know, this was like, I won't say it's their first big test because it wasn't the first big test was week one. We also got to put not an asterisk, but we also got to note that Travis Kelsey didn't play that game. Chris Jones didn't play that game. It, 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 it was it was a you know Patrick Mahomes out there throwing to me. You know what I'm saying? It was, a, it was a little bit of a different situation. So I guess at this point, I'm gonna be great in Lions off primetime opponents they see. And this first one was a fail to me. So um next, let's talk about a, t- a team and a quarterback. We talk about a lot on here. The Buffalo Bills, man. Uh I, I just don't know what to think about this team. This team is four and three right now. If we look at, at how they play in this season, uh, you know, they lost to the Jets week one, which was Aaron Rodgers injury game, and they might have took their foot off the gas. Um, you know what I'm saying, with the way that was playing because of you know Aaron Rodgers injury. They thought, oh, there's no way we're gonna lose Zach Wilson and these niggas. Then you go home, your home opener, you blow out the Raiders. That's not impressive. The fucking Bears beat the Raiders last night. Then you go to the Commanders, blow them niggas out. Once again, not impressive. The Bears beat the fucking Commanders. Beat, beat the Commanders' ass. Then you go, you make a light work out of the Miami Dolphins, which is a good win, but might not because we don't know how good the Dolphins are now. Uh, you lose a close one in London to Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. And you come out here and you make motherfucking Mac Jones look serviceable. Like, like what the fuck are we doing? I think that's an issue. Um I don't want to know. I don't want to if I'm ready to call them frauds, but I have a lot of questions. Like we all know the defense is going to have a setback. They lost Tremaine Edmonds. They lost a lot of guys on there. 
Um, as good as Josh Allen can be, he tweaks a lot, does throws a lot of turnovers. Uh, and then also sometimes he just only throws to Stefan Diggs and ignores the rest of his team. Do y'all think that they're frauds or they are just wildly inconsistent to the point that you never know which, which thing you're going to get? I wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as to call them frauds, but I agree. They're just wildly inconsistent. And, um, it's fortunately with the skill that they possess, as long as they get hot at the right time, that shit not going to matter. So as long as toward the end of the season, you know, they lock down their playoff spot. And if they're able to get, you know, their home field and have at least one game and people got to come to Buffalo, that's going to set them up for success. So I, I wouldn't say a fraud, but they are inconsistent. And it's one of those things where uh, here we are now, year two of no dabble. So let's really see what Josh Allen can do and how he, you know, starts to adjust to that new offense. Because like you said, it's been highs, it's been lows. So like, what what is going to be that consistent level for, for Josh? And I think wherever he goes, that's where that team is going to go. Yeah, hundred percent. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say they're frauds either, but we did highlight them as a team that had a lot to prove this year. Uh, you know, as long as uh, along with the Dallas Cowboys. So I think this was their first game without playing without their leader of their defense, Matt Milano, who they lost when they played over in London um, with the season-ending injury. So defensively, they showed they showed some warts, especially in the short passing game. I mean, Ramondre Stevenson had a ridiculous game catching the ball and receiving. And you, he's not really somebody that you – like he's not really a running back that you would use a lot in a passing game. So I thought that Bill Belichick just crafted up a perfect game. We know that Bill Belichick is one of the – one of the you know, one of the GOATs, arguably the GOAT as far as – uh, NFL coaches, and he's good for a couple of these performances every year, you know, especially with a team that's not as talented as we're accustomed to over in New Orleans and New England. But the Bills, I don't know, something is missing. Something is missing. I don't know if it's offensively, I don't know if it's defensively, but to me, they seem to have hit a wall. Uh, Josh Allen is what it looks like is he's trying to play hero ball a lot like a lot a lot the offensive the offense isn't flowing like Dante said that could be a big part due to the departure of Brian Dable but they were they were confident in, in Dable and Dable leaving and last year Josh Allen still had a big year offensively with Dable gone and Stefan you know and Stefan Diggs had a big year so there, there, there's just a lot of misses there was a throw by Josh Allen at the end of the game yesterday that could have got them in position to have at least one more attempt at the end zone. And Stefan Diggs dropped it on the uh, New England 30. So I, they're just not clicking right now. Something, Something's going on over there. And I, we're going to watch them. I don't think they're frauds. But if they do not have a successful season this year, especially in the playoffs, then, yeah, they will be on fraud alert going into next season. I mean, it might not even take that long because if you look, I'm looking at the schedule right now. Uh they, they ain't got no easy games coming. They got Thursday night football this week. Of course, the Buccaneers, they're not a good team. They can definitely be competitive. Then they go to Cincinnati. Then they play, you know, the Broncos ain't good, but uh, they can win. They can beat y'all. Like, they're able to uh, go out there and beat them, especially the way they've been fucking playing. Then you got the Jets again, who they lost to week one. That's the division game. Then they go on the road to Philadelphia. <laughs> then they go on the road to play the Chiefs. Then they play the Cowboys. That defense can do what they want to do with uh, Josh Allen. And they Shit, go to L.A. to play the Chargers. Schedule. Yeah. Then they just play the Bills, the Patriots again, who they just lost to, and then they finish out the season in Miami. So in Miami. it might not even take that long. We really going to figure out um, what this team is about, man. Uh, we want to have join in about five minutes. We're going to wrap up this, uh, you know, this, you know, our storylines. Got two more. One, this should be a quick one, man. How the fuck are the Pittsburgh Steelers winning games? Like the Pittsburgh Steelers came out here to LA last last night, won 24-17 in a very entertaining game. By the way, I gotta give a shout out to Samoan Cooper Cup. I don't even know if that nigga's Samoan, but he got a Samoan ass name. <laughs> uh Pua Nakua. That nigga and that nigga's amazing. It's like watching um Cooper Cup with his Padawan, man. They've been good. You know, it was a couple Matt Stafford interceptions, but Kenny Pickett. As mediocre as you can get. He didn't throw for any touchdowns. They only had like probably one off one or two offensive touchdowns. They still won. Is this more of a testament to just how amazing of a coach Mike Tomlin is? Or do you think this team for some reason might actually be decent? 
It's coaching, bro. It's, per, it's a prime example of how you have a system in place and you have people that believe in that system and know how to coach that system. Uh, you can be successful. Like, it may not always, you know, equal Super Bowl victories, but you're going to at least compete every day. And it's what we talk about. And I hate, you know, me, I hate that we always go back to these motherfuckers. But, like, with <laughs> the Bears, G, it's just a lack of, a, a lack of, of sense in the way like you look at the, you look at them and say like where is the football IQ where is the discipline and like with a team like Mike Tomlin you know you're always gonna get those things and if you don't get it you're not gonna fucking be there you know that's why he put up with AB until he just couldn't take it no more you know they say he used to hold the plane for AB let AB show up, like all of that because he knew he would be able to get the production out of him you know and so it's now it's to a point where you know the proof is in the pudding bros never had a fucking losing season like it. They don't at this point. I'm convinced it don't matter who you put over there. If Mitch was in the game, they'd be doing the same shit. Find a ways to win. Yeah, yeah. I think a, a lot, a large credit goes to Mike Tomlin for having his boys ready. I know he was pissed after a couple of the losses earlier in the season. He said things would change. You know, for the first time, you've seen the Steelers and Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator, have uh, Jalen Warren and Najee Harris on the field at the same time, and that opens it up so much, especially when you got a young quarterback and somebody who we all agree is. Might not be the guy, but he can be a, a solid game manager. I think it also helps. It's not easy for teams from the East Coast to fly out or fly out West and, and play these West Coast games early. But I think it helps when that shit sounds like Heinz Field Jr. That sounded yeah. like a home. That sounded like a home game for the Steelers. And you could tell they fed off that energy. They fed off of blue face over there with strippers in the corner throwing dollars and shit. So the it United was a, it Center was, influence. Right, right. <laughs> it was it was it was a it was a great performance by them on the road. And I just I honestly think that that crowd boosted them. Yeah. Uh I, I yeah, I agree with you on that one, man. Uh our last storyline before we bring Pavy in and talk in, in, in the NBA. Uh it's a little college thing. Caleb Williams, man, uh, a guy who all Bears fans pay attention to for obvious reasons. Not really just not Bears fans. Every team that has less than three wins is paying attention to right now. Uh, they lost their second game in a row uh, to Utah, 34-32 over a field goal towards the end of that game. Utah's now 6-1. and one. Uh, Caleb Williams, for like almost going on six weeks now, it's looked very mediocre. Uh, Mikey uh, sent me like a list of, you know, games a couple weeks ago. He's like, yo, this guy, he has certain – might have certain front running tactics that you need to pay attention to. So I've had my pen and my pad pad out like motherfucking Stringer Bell when he was taking the community college classes, uh, paying attention to Caleb Williams. And I see a lot of traits as talented as he is that I don't like this 24, 34, 256 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, the sulking on the bench, the, you know, not being around his teammates last week when they got destroyed by North Notre Dame. My question to both of y'all is Caleb Williams a front runner? And obviously, I'm not saying that it's going to change his draft status because I don't see anybody uh, passing up on it. But are these concerning traits if your team is planning on taking him number one overall? I mean, it's it's obviously he's not this guy. People got mad when I mentioned him in the same sentence, but it's kind of the Zach Wilson effect. Like, I, how many times can I watch you make throws against trash ass defenses when you got nine seconds to throw and there's nobody running with him and everybody's running butt naked? So, like, it's a lot of plays where you see those splash plays and you talk about everything else, but it's like when it gets tough, when he actually has to make those decisions against better defenses, we've seen him struggle, and he's consistently struggled. He did it at Oklahoma. He did it here. So I think front runner is tough, but I think it's one of those situations where, like we always say, the way people gas prospects, and we always want to find that next great thing and that next superstar and, like – uh you know, for a minute, I bought into the hype, but I don't know if y'all remember if just a few years ago, motherfuckers were telling us Jameis Winston was one of the greatest quarterbacks in yeah. the IQ yeah. wise and yeah. just having the intangibles and having notebooks where he was writing out plays when he was 12 years old and all that shit. And that nigga can't hit the broad side of a barn. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's easy for us to, you know, fall in love with prospects, but I think you have to really just take it all in stride. And with a guy like Caleb, I wouldn't use the word front runner. But I would say that even with his immense talent, it's work to do. It's like it's not he's not gonna just come in and light the league up. Like that shit did. Yeah, you can tell you can tell that he, he kind of easily gets gets flustered. I don't know if he's used to having everything being perfect when he's playing against some of these lower level Pac 12 teams or when he was in the Big 12 with, with Lincoln Riley. But He's taking on the personality of his head coach. Lincoln Riley is a fucking bum. 
Lincoln Riley, after this loss, refused to have his players talk to the media. Lincoln Riley takes no accountability within that program. I heard that he really doesn't even meet with boosters. He doesn't really partake in a lot of the USC culture events. He really gives off the persona of somebody who's just there probably for until Caleb Williams is, is gone. So when you have a head coach like that and you traveled with him, you transferred with him from Oklahoma over to to USC, you're going to get away with you're going to get away with some of those things that you mentioned, Scott, with the with the sulking, with the front running. With my thing is, I'm just not really a big fan of his on field demeanor and mechanics. First off, I can't trust a motherfucker who plays football in no show socks. Secondly, and he paints his fingernails. Yeah, we ain't even gonna talk about that. <laughs> we, we ain't even gonna talk about that. I don't I don't like the 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 running around with the ball, like just being held at your hip, even when you're trying to make a pass. Like everything looks like it's uh it's a it looks like he's trying to make everything be a highlight play, and that's not how football operates, and that's definitely not how football is gonna work when he comes up on Sunday. So it's definitely concerning. Front runner might be tough, but he is leaning more in that direction. And we're not going to see Caleb Williams playing in a big game. That's it for them. They have two losses. Yeah, they it's, still it's have right. they still have the gauntlet of Washington and Oregon. Ooh, so I, I know he'll play for the rest of the year. But the Heisman, him being a Heisman, right. the two time winning Heisman, that's a wrap on that. And for them being in a playoff game. So now we got to see what type of motivation he has. You're gonna see uh, USC in uh, the Del Taco Bowl coming, in. and it's one <laughs> one last stat, and we'll wrap this up. Uh, I saw this on my TV, and I almost fainted. Uh, struggles against the best in his 23 starts against nine 25 ranked teams. He has a completion percentage of 70.3. He throws for 30 317.2 yards per game. Uh, with 78 touchdown to seven interception ratio. Now, in his five starts against uh, top 25 teams, he has a 51.4 completion percentage, 172 passing yards a game, and six touchdowns to six interceptions. That is uh, your ESPN cohort. Uh, hard, <laughs> Coors like cohort facts, man. Um, that's going to conclude our top storylines from the football uh, weekend, man. Now we're here to talk NBA because that's what we do here on h &B Media and on Barber's Chat Network. So we're going to bring in uh, my brother. Uh, he is uh, one of the founders of this great uh, basketball network you watch, h &B Media. He is also a rapper extraordinaire. He is also uh, you know, a co-host of uh, Summer Sessions, which you can find on the Barber's Chat Network Patreon. And he is the president of West Hollywood. Pat Vito, what is going on, my, my guy? How you feeling, man? I love the... Uh, I love the uh intro that was dope the intro, I, I, I bid you up i, I, I bid you up, I bid you up. <laughs> uh so we are about 24 hours away from the start of the nba season uh it was it was, it was a decent off season probably not as as you know as much stuff happening as years past but of course you had the big um dame lillard to milwaukee bucks thing we'll get into a minute before we start that conversation, what what's some things you actually felt about, like as far as player movement this this offseason? It was kind of like slower than usual. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the new uh, well, well, not the new salary cap, but the new CBA, and um, teams probably not wanting to go over the second handle, especially if well the um, I think but the second whatever it's called, especially if you don't have a chance to win right now. So I think the teams that um are going for it are literally going for it like the bucks going for it the uh Celtics clearly going for it um even a team like the Timberwolves with the moves that with, with with the contracts that they've given out seem to be a team that like they think that they can go for it so um I think a lot of that was just a reaction to like I said the new um CBA agreement and the uh, and the um stiff penalties you have um you know if you go over the um second line yeah, I feel like Adam Silver kind of like, you know, laid the law down a little bit this offseason, like also with the the low management rules, which I am a big fan of because I hate low management. Y'all call me old school. Y'all come with the fuck out what you want. I, as I, I feel like just from when I, I'm I'm blessed, really all four of us are blessed to go to a lot of games. Um you know, and so for me, it's not a problem to be able to go to sporting events. But for the average fan, they might only be able to afford, you know, one or two games a year. And you want to see your stars. Now, in some situations, I get it. You know, they if they're, if they're hurt, they're hurt. You can't do nothing about that. But I'm glad they implemented rules a little bit to change that. Um, we're going to start. I have a couple topics we want to go uh, go with, you know. I'm going to that, though. 
go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. My only thing is like, how do you tell people that they aren't hurt? Because even if you, for instance, right, we all cover the clip. Well, when me and you, we we both cover the Clippers. Yeah. When you look at the injury report, they have injury issues on there. Like, like yeah. they'll have like knee management, they'll have shoulder management, whatever. So it's like my thing is like, I think you get to a slippery slope. Is like, how do you actually curve that by telling people that they aren't hurt? Like right. how, how my knee is not hurting right now. But you right, right. But you walking that like they're walking that thin fine line of you know playing hurt and injured. You know, are are you are you injured? Can you not lace them up, or are you you know is your is your knee kind of barking, or is your thigh a little bit bruised from playing you know four games in seven days? So it's definitely you're definitely walking a fine line there. Um, and I we definitely got some breaking news. Giannis yeah. out to Takupo. Yeah. Three year extension, one hundred and eighty six million dollars. Oh wow! Okay, okay. Look, look, so, look, look, look at Mikey with the scoop. All right. <laughs> so Giannis will be staying, and he has a Giannis player option. Okay. He has a player option for twenty the twenty seven twenty eight season. So Giannis shout is there. Out, shout out to the Bucks for moving like an actual NBA team, and not their fellow Midwest brothers, Bulls, who I'll get into later in the show. I don't feel like ranting about right now, but. We've got a couple topics. You know what's funny? Whenever we talk Chicago sports, Dante has his look of disgust. Like he, because <laughs> I mean, at what point is enough enough? Like we know what's gonna happen. Like nothing, nothing. I'm not, I'm not expecting these niggas to. The expectation went away a long time ago. I just still. I'm like, huh? Okay. You know. Yeah. But uh, so I got a gang of topics we're gonna get into, and we, we know we'll go around the room with this man. Let's talk about. Victor Wibbenyama, and for all you media outlets who are going to act like you don't know how to pronounce the nigga name, it's Wibbenyama. If my ass can pronounce his name and I fuck everybody's name up, y'all should be able to pronounce this. Victor Wibbenyama, uh, he has looked like a fucking alien in, in the preseason. There's no way around it. I try not to overreact too much around preseason, uh, but he looks fucking crazy. Uh, he looks like everything that he's been hyped up to be. The only question I have, especially about super lanky mugs like him, is can he stay healthy? Um, Pavy, what do you think about what you saw from uh Wimby during the preseason? What his season outlook looks like uh, with him in the Spurs? Okay, now here's the thing about preseason. I try not to overreact too much to preseason, and I will tell you the one moment when I was actually done with. Preseason. I already know what you're gonna say, Scott. Zero. Scott. Scott. <laughs> the year you came back, yeah. you went insane preseason. <laughs> the very yeah. first game against Philadelphia, nigga had ten turnovers. Yeah. So I, like, I was done with preseason. Having said all of that, he looks insane. <laughs> he looks insane. Um, um, my my thing with him is honestly, I mean, I'm a honestly, I'm gonna like go there. I think he can win defensive player of the year first season. Okay, I think it's an actual thing that he could actually do. I mean, like if Jer- if Jaron Jackson can get three blocks, you try to tell me he can't get three blocks. I think. <laughs> right. anything- I think anything less than him getting three blocks is actually a failure. I actually think, forget his offense. Um, you know, like, like I think, I think even like the shoot, I think we're like kind of enamored by it. But I don't think it's just gonna be that easy for him every single night. Like even when he, when, he, when he played against the um Heat and he did that thing that whatever everyone's going crazy. That was Thomas Bryant in the regular season. That'll be Bam on the bio. You know, you'll have people who will offer a little bit more resistance to him um right away and again i think he'll get bigger i think he'll you know um grow um into it but i don't think it'll be as easy as it looked for him in preseason but defensively i think from day one he should be a top 10 defender in the um league like with that length and it's even even like small deal even if he isn't blocking shots you can see people get the ball and then he gets there and it's like well i'm not gonna shoot this because i can't even see the rim right now or he'll just like close out and people are air ball i forgot i was watching the game um they playing somebody and he closed out on somebody they Dario Saric. He closed out on Saric, and Saric shot over him, but he airballed. It's probably because he couldn't even see the rim. So I think from day one, my man, but I even said this even like when he got drafted. I think from day one, he should be one of the best defenders in the um league. And when I look at his career outlook, I think he should be, I think, honestly, damn near Bill Russell when it comes to that. I think defensively, he should be one of the greatest players that we've ever seen as long as he can at least stay on the court. I I, I agree with that. I think, you know, when you see – the videos of Sham God down in Dallas wearing the arm extenders and they're, they're getting prepared for women. Like niggas his, is prepping for war. Yeah, nigg, niggas, niggas are shook. Like he, he has the ability to change the game on both sides of the ball. And like one of the things that I saw that was crazy was here he is. He defended a wing in Andrew Wiggins from the from the uh from the corner. Came, Andrew drove, he blocked the shot, came down on the break, pulled up, hit the three. So I think, you know, I agree, you know, it is preseason. So we know in the reg- in the regular season, a lot of these shots won't come as easy. So with Wembley, I think my Wimby, my only concern is, you know, how he handles the physicality. 
we know we saw Luca adapt to it. Luca said it was still, he said it was easy. You know, it was easy money. So seeing these these great uh, players from overseas as they come over, how they adjust to the modern game, which you know, as Pavi has said for years, the game ain't really physical no more. It's not it's not that old bang them, bruise them up type of game. So I think as long as he can withstand that, and like we said, he's still young, he'll continue to get bigger and stronger. It's gonna be insane. And like one thing I saw. Well, they were because we know everybody's concerned, obviously, with his length is the injuries. They were saying how like he's done scientifically everything he can to make his feet as strong as possible. And they show some of the nut ass exercises he does. And it's like, <laughs> so he's put the prep work in. So as long as he can stay healthy, like we say with a lot of guys, I think it's truly like the sky's the limit, bro. We might we're gonna see some things that we that gonna make you say, like, oh shit, like nah, he's he's really nice. Nah, when when I saw that highlight of him when w Wiggins was trying to break him down and he didn't even fucking move like he's just right there like you're not going nowhere and Andrew Wiggins isn't a small motherfucker you know what I'm saying he made Wiggins look this big I was like oh okay now I see what Pavi's talking about like defensively because I didn't obviously we see with the length we see you know he can alter shots at the rim obviously make it tough on the jump shooters but when he his lateral movement, I was like, oh, no, Buddy is different. So how how everybody, you know, I'm just going to piggyback off y'all. As long as he can stay healthy, then Wembenyama has a very bright future in this league. And it's coming down to that point now where we have kind of like a changing of the guard where, you know, LeBron is kind of leaving. KD is getting older. Giannis will probably still take in now as that number one player. But who's next up? And it's, it's, it's Wembenyama's for the taking. Yeah, I think even like from from both perspectives, you look from like a superstar perspective. He already had a run in with Britney Spears on this this, this offseason. I mean, so as far as superstar, <laughs> TMZ niggas already know who he is. So it's really all about playing. Um, so I, I definitely um agree with that. It's just really about the kid just you know staying healthy, man. Um, one uh, I got a little bit more. Not really breaking news, but we'll talk about this more in the local hour. Seems like Jalen Johnson's two interception game. Uh got Ryan Poles to wake up as, as he says on uh, parking to Spiegel on 670 score that his representatives are now talking to the Bears about contract extension. So that's something we'll discuss later on in the uh, local hour. But uh, let's move on to our next point here in our season preview, man. I want to talk about something I'm not really a fan of, which is the in-season tournament. I, I don't get it whatsoever. I've had it broken down to me many times. It still sounds stupid to me, but it's starting right away. It's going to start next Friday, November 3rd, and we'll be going on until Saturday, December 9th, with the championship game will be in Las Vegas Anything NBA championship in Las Vegas doesn't sound like a good mix to me, but what the hell do I know? Uh, Pavi, what's your opinion on the end season tournament? I know they're trying to draw up interest, especially with you know a lot of eyes still in the NFL at the beginning of the year. Do you think it's a smart move? Do you think it'll, it'll pan out? What's your whole opinion on the end season tournament? Um, in theory, I hate it, but I'm gonna give it a chance. Like, even I think when they even like announced the play in, like before I actually saw it work in the bubble, I was like, this is stupid, but then once I actually saw it work. It was something I loved. So I'm going to give it a chance. Um, I think that – I think the one cool thing about it is maybe you will see a team – for instance, right, I, like in the playoffs last year, how Sacramento was a team that was kind of good all year, but they didn't really get that, like, big stage until the playoffs. I think it's a way that maybe, you know, you may have, like, a surprise team that may go on a run. Like, you may have, like, an Orlando, a team that doesn't usually get, you know, um, on that stage, especially – in the early part of the um, season that, you know, can maybe get on a run and maybe, you know, some guys put their names on the map that usually wouldn't be on the map. Uh, so I think, you know, maybe you could see that happen. And if that's something that happens, and I think that that's something that's dope for the league, for the players. And again, guys also are getting paid too. I think you get a, like a bonus for winning. And yeah, it's everybody, like 500K. It's like 500K a player. Yeah, like everybody ain't making 20 million a year. You got yeah. some other guys down there at the end of that bench. That $500,000 can do some good for them. So, you know, I'm going to give it a chance. In theory, I don't like it, but, you know, I at least want to give it a chance. For the most part, I like most of the, the rules and the um, changes that Adam Silver has made. Even if I don't like it at first, it becomes something I like. So I at least want to see it before I speak on it. And I'm never against going to Vegas. Throwing that out there. I'm never against <laughs> going to Vegas. Hey, hey, you and me both, bro. I'm about to say I go to Vegas three, four times a year. So <laughs> like, it, it, it's perfect. But um, I agree. And I think um, also – like we always talk about, you know, what drives the revenue. And a lot of it is these TV contracts. So you need to create these events and different things that you can pitch and sell to them. So, you know, the contracts continue to grow. And that's one of the reasons that revenue around the league has continued to get higher and higher. So I agree uh, in similar fashion to the uh, play-in. 
we need to see it in action first before we say we hate it. Like a lot of shit, uh, people in our generation, we starting to sound like those, you know, stay off my lawn ass. My we definitely some old niggas now. That we, that we used to hate. And so a lot of times when I get ready to hate on some shit, I have to take a step back and say, is this just me, you know, being stuck in my ways and used to the traditions I like and shit like that? Or is this something that's really trash? So I think we got to at least give it a shot. And I think, you know, overall, it's, it's just a lot of it is just a frame and it's still the same amount of games. This ain't, it's not nothing major. You feel me? Facts. Yeah. I, f- I feel you on that. I was the same conversation last week with my guy and he was like, what do you think of, of this tournament? And I'm the same way. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to, how to think about it, but I'm going to give it a shot. Everything that Adam Silver has done for the most part, I've agreed with. The only shit that I don't agree with that the league is doing is these fucking city connect jerseys every oh, year. And they're, oh, fucking, they're so fucking bad. They're man. fucking, they're, they're terrible. They're, they're terrible. Mind you, views on my own. I do work for the swoosh, but them shit to ask. <laughs> um, but uh, he said the views and thoughts do not represent uh, Mikey. my employer, right? Yeah, my employer. Um, right. But for example, like the all star game, when they switched that format to X amount of points win the quarter, but for or X amount of points, you totaled it up, totaled it up. We donated to charity, but the fourth quarter actually meant something. I thought that shit was so stupid until you actually watch it. And I'm like, oh, no, this shit is fire because they're actually getting after it. And you're seeing guys are playing. So you got guys are playing all out. So that's the number one thing for me is I want to see the veteran teams, the Boston Celtics, the Miami Heat. I want to see how the Lakers approach this. I want to see how the Nuggets approach this. Are they just going to treat this like a tune-up because they're still worried about you know, April, May, and June. On the flip side, I want to see the OKCs. I want to see the Sacramento Kings again. I want to see a team like the Orlando Magic and the Detroit Pistons really try to give some guys go. So it's going to be interesting to see, and I won't knock it until we actually see the product on the court. I mean, uh, Mikey, you kind of hit like the nail on the head. It's really about effort for me, and that's with anything with the NBA in general. And I think my number one issue with the NBA today is I don't feel, and I don't want to say like they're not going to try hard. Who am I to say a, a professional athlete isn't trying hard? But sometimes some of these niggas don't be trying. Like even you name with with the when they changed the the All Star format. I think the first year was it was the All Star game right after Kobe died, and it was in Chicago. That fourth quarter was amazing. And I feel like it was like that for a couple years after that, too. Now, last year, them niggas just did not give a fuck. That was one of the worst all-star, not only all-star games, one of the worst all-star weekends I've ever seen in my life. So if they go out there and they're actually competing, this is something they're actually caring about, and you bring up the money, if that's a big enough incentive for them to get going, I'll give it a shot. I'm, I, I'll try most things. You know, uh, first to see how I like it, see how 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 it does. Like with the with the play in, I thought it was a genius idea from the jump, and uh, it, it's actually played out better than I thought it would. I feel like for the most part, it's been entertaining every year of its inception. So maybe this would be the same thing if they could try hard and if we have some of these more exciting young teams who are probably not going to be around come playoff time. I think there's a lot of uh, hype around the Oklahoma City Thunder. They got a pretty cool slam cover that I saw today. We, which I'm start. I like the old school slam covers. As a, as an OG subscriber of Slam, I even subscribe to Slam Magazine. I'm showing my age right now. Slam Magazine, Double XL, and the Source. I used to bring them shit in, in class in high school all the damn time for the cold ass covers. So the Oklahoma City Thunder co- cover they did was pretty dope. If you have young teams like them, teams like the Kings, teams like the Pistons, uh, like that, the Magic, who are competing, and maybe they even knock some of these older teams out, then yeah, I think it can be more exciting. But it's really just all about effort to me. And we even had uh, that State Farm agent, Clifford Paul, say he told uh, Joe Lakeup and the Warriors, oh, we're going to win that cup. And maybe that's just because that nigga ain't won nothing. He just wants something <laughs> in, his, in, in his fucking uh, lo- uh, you know, trophy room or whatever. But if the effort is there, I'll give it a shot, man. So uh, I'm just why you ain't tell them why why you leave out the King magazine subscription? Why you leave that one out? I was just about to say why you leave out the King magazine. My mother mother got the the mail. There's no way I was getting the King subscription. (laughs) It's just not gonna happen. It just not gonna happen. Like you know. Yeah, yeah, I, nigga, nigga had to like go through the Jet Magazine. What's the Ebony Beauty of the Week real quick? Like, we got up in here. Like, <laughs> look my mama come around. So I definitely didn't have that. I definitely would be like, you remember how you go to like the FYU or some shit, co- coconuts, nigga, just be looking through, you know, in the aisle. Like, oh, okay, buy me the body. You know what I'm saying? But, right. The one thing I want to see, though, from the from this tournament, I want to see if 
how we were talking about the like the competitive juices and the competitive nature. I want to see if we can develop some storylines for the for the yeah, rest of the season or this yeah. like some rivalry, some new some new blood. So that that that's gonna be dope. Uh, let's move on to uh, a guy who we just talked about a couple seconds ago. Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, Damian Lillard got traded to the Bucks a couple weeks ago. Man, uh, they have been even in the preseason. I like how they how they how they've seen defensively. I got some questions about them, but uh, my question to you, Pat, because I haven't really heard your opinion on this outside of you know what we talked about in the group chat. What do you think about the trade? Uh, of course, like everything that went on, and do you think they should be uh, only Eastern favorites, or should they just be title favorites in general? Yes, but no, but no, but yes. Um, I actually think the trade is a okay. I'm gonna preface this by saying if you have a chance to go get Damian Lillard, you go get Damian Lillard. For one, he's what one of the 75 best players ever played a game of basketball. All I, I love Dame. He should not be on that list. He should, he should not over like, no, 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 not over Dwight. That was bogus. But Dame being on that list will look better in 20 years than it than it looks to you right now, I think. Maybe. 100%. Okay. But as in the year that was made, hell no. No, no, like like Dame. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, whatever, yeah. <laughs> but he's one of the 75 best players. Also, Giannis doesn't sign that extension, I'm sure, if you don't go out and get Dane. Also, it's a great business move. When you're playing fucking Milwaukee. You got to keep people interested. You got to keep making money. But all that being said, I think the trade was a slight overreaction. Slight overreaction. Um, And I wonder if you solved, you quote-unquote solved one issue because I didn't necessarily think that the offense was that bad in the first place. And also, the last time they were healthy, they won a championship which was 2021. Now, granted, you could say Chris Middleton has taken a step back since then. That's fair. He had his um, knee issue that I don't necessarily think he's actually recovered from. But for some reason, they had a working formula. Like, I remember that year, you would see Giannis off ball a lot. They would get a ball to Middleton. They would get a ball to Drew and let Giannis roll to the rim. For some fucking reason, last year, they just went back to letting Giannis try to drive through 16 people and do four back dives. I have no idea why they did that. And also, I wonder if you just – if you quote unquote solved one issue offensively and created a whole nother issue defensively. Um, if you look at even last year, right? The Jimmy Butler thing, they don't really have anybody who can guard wings mm-hmm. on the team. Now, granted, maybe you say, okay, you get you get um Dame. Now, if Jimmy is going crazy, you throw um Dame out there and you think, all right, if Jimmy gonna score 50, Dame, you gonna score 50, and Giannis, you try to guard Jimmy. But even still, that's a lot off matchup because Giannis is the power forward center and Jimmy is a wing. You still have nobody out there who can guard wings. And when I look at a team like the uh, Celtics, I remember that playoff series, uh, Pelicans Blazers, a couple years back. Oh, yes. Dame was arrested. Dame was in jail. Dame, Dame Carr is still in Drew Holiday's name. Dane went up there post game and said, I have never been defended this way. And I didn't even want to argue with him because he probably hadn't. The man who did that is playing for the other team in the East now. So yeah. granted, so granted, yes, again, I love the move. Um, and I mean, obviously, like, you know, even fast breaks, Giannis going down fast break, you got to collapse, you kick it out to Dane. At first, he was kicking it out to Grayson Allen and Drew Holiday. Dane shooting that ball is a lot better than Grayson Allen, Drew Holiday, Pat Connaughton, whoever, the, Jay Crowder, whoever the hell else. But like I said, last time this team was healthy, they won a championship. And I wonder if you, quote unquote, again, solved one issue, but created, but created a whole nother one. Also, we got to see about the coach. Like, I want to give him a chance, but I don't know what he does. And I think a lot of the things actually at some points in times in the past were like Bud's fault. I thought Bud was a great defensive man, but offensively, again, sometimes it's like, bro, brother, what are you doing? You just letting Giannis dribble into 16 people, bro. We looking at you and you know, this doesn't work. So again, like I said, I like it, but I, I do have my questions. And to answer the favorites conversation, no, I actually think Boston should be the favorites in the East, in my personal opinion. So this is this this what I'm gonna say about it. One, I got a rebuttal to the it was too much. There's never too much when you're trading for a superstar. Yes, you're not gonna 100 percent uh fix all the uh, problems. I'm also gonna use this in what we used a couple weeks ago. I think we'll bangers on here and we were talking about uh sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to keep your person you know what I'm saying the Bucks ain't want you know the uh Giannis was doing the liking niggas pictures on Instagram shit he's liking liking bitches pictures on Instagram that's what the nigga was doing so yeah maybe maybe they overpaid you know you know uh what, what Kobe had to pay four million dollars for that ring 10 years ago to make sure Vanessa ain't leave like sometimes you gotta overpay sometimes you gotta pay the five to make sure she don't leave so I'm not mad at the, what the Bucks did with that I don't think they should be title favorites because I still feel like 
it's the Denver Nuggets. And when we'll get into when we talk about the game, like they niggas lost nobody but Bruce Brown. Uh, so I still think the Nuggets should be the favorite, but in the East, they should 100 percent be the title favorites. I don't want to hear shit about the goddamn Boston Celtics until Jason Tatum realizes that maybe I stop playing like an asshole when the fucking the all the marbles online. There's no damn way that series should have went to seven last year. They shouldn't have been down 3 0. I love Jimmy Butler, I love what the Heat do, but there's a lot of shit. The, the Heat shouldn't have been there because the, the Bucks shouldn't have lost to them niggas and the Celtics shouldn't have lost to them niggas. So and still him and Mr. I Can't Dribble, uh, Daniel from Insecure himself, Jalen Brown, can actually play together as one and Joe Mazzula actually used his timeouts. I got questions about the, about the Celtics. They're relying a lot on Al Horford and, you know, the, 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 this his old age and, and, I, and Porzingis is good. Can the niggas stay healthy? So they've got a lot of questions too. So I do feel like the Milwaukee Bucks should be the Eastern Conference favorites just because as many questions I have about, about Milwaukee, I got way more questions about Boston. I got, I'm, I'm riding with Boston as a favorite too, just off the strength that you're adding a veteran NBA champion in Jeru Holiday to kind of be the voice of reason. You know, Marcus Smart, I, when they traded Marcus Smart, I was really leery of that decision because they were, that's taking away a big part. You're taking away your, kind of your heart and soul, your defensive. He does a lot of the intangible stuff. But now you bring in a better version of Marcus Smart and Jeru Holiday. I think they won't have those lapses come April, May when they're facing a, you know, Miami down here. I don't think they'll allow it to get to, to 3-0. So I really do like the Boston Celtics as a favorite. I think adding KP is huge. I don't think they really are missing anything in trading Robert Williams. I think they got to upgrade in KP. Jeru Holiday is that piece right there to tie it all together. I, You know, the Bucks. we've seen this time and time again. Every time a superstar gets traded to a new team and everybody hops on that, that team as the flavor of the month, that that team is going to win it all. It does not work like that. This is professional sports and they have to build chemistry. There's too many moving parts from the Milwaukee side that I agree with Pavi that with Pavi that has left that, you know, they're going to have to work through that and you're implementing a new coach. So it's going to take time for the Bucks. Ask me this question next year after a full year of them playing. Now that we know Giannis will be there, but I, I'm still riding with the Boston Celtics. Yeah, I agree. I think we go, we go a little too hard on the Celtics because of their shortcomings without realizing they got two of the best wing players in the league and they both, they both still under 25, right? Uh, yeah, I'm tired of hearing about the age. It's like hearing so, about no, but but you no no no. You, but like you, you got to mention it though. But not even that. That's different. You got yeah, to before, before he won. It. Before he won, all you heard was he's 24. <laughs> he's a quarterback yeah. genius. But I mean that's real. That's and like in hindsight, when you look back at anybody who's won anything before they win it, what do we always say? When they gonna do it? When is it gonna happen? So with a team like with a team like Boston, when you have two of those two two of the top talent uh, wings in the league, and you add a Drew Holiday. I think, you know, the edge to adding KP, that team has already been so close and has been the Eastern Conference Finals and been to the finals that you just – they're one piece away. Essentially, they're taking that next step. And so I think as much as I like Milwaukee, and I think it really – a lot of this conversation uh, depends on what we get from Chris Middleton, uh, which version of Chris Middleton they get on a nightly basis. That's going to determine the success of Milwaukee, obviously, although, you know, Dame and Giannis will drive that that team. Um, but even still, I would have to go with Boston as the favorite. I think coming out the East, they should definitely be the title favorites uh, over anybody. If I could just add one more thing to the Boston thing. Sure. Um, also, I think sometimes in Milwaukee, when you talk about Drew's offense, I think sometimes Drew, and many times, damn near, especially down the stretch, because, I mean, Giannis can't shoot free throws, so you don't really want him getting fouled. He was the number one option sometimes, number one or number two option. I think that's a little bit too much to ask for Drew Holiday. I don't think he's that talented of an offensive player to be, um, you know, one of the main guys, especially down the stretch. He's in a situation in Boston. There will never be a point in time in which he's anything more unless somebody is not playing more, more than the fourth option on um, offense. Never. Mm -hmm. And with Chris has Porzingis, I think because – you know, he was touted as being Dirk Nowinski and he, you know, didn't become Dirk. And then he went to Dallas and Luca just decided I'm never going to pass you the basketball, even though he still averaged 20 points in Dallas. We act like K uh, KP just can't play basketball. I, I understand the man gets hurt sometimes, but last year he played 65 games. He had a great, he had probably the best season of his career last year in Washington. Now you can say that's because, you know, he got the ball a lot, Bradley Beal went there, whatever, but he had one of his best seasons last year in Washington. And, I don't think we're giving enough credence to his rim protection. 
there was a quote Anthony Edwards said where he even looks at KP as one of the best rubber protectors in the league, and that's Anthony Edwards. The man is still 7'3". He's never played on a team with this many defenders. Like, brother, and your back, like, you realistically on this team could have four all-defensive players. Like, you got Drew Holiday. You got um, Derek White. Um, you have Jalen Brown, you have, well, not Brown, but you have Tatum. I think, I think when Tatum locks in, he's a really good defender, um, as well. And then KP, KP on this team last year, he averaged 1.5, 1.5 blocks. He should average two. I mean, granted Horford is older, but now Horford just has to kind of shade him that way, shade him to him and KP can come in and, um, play cleanup. And also I actually, I like the Celtics bench. I know we're not talking about it, but I don't think it's that bad. Like, I, I'm not looking at the list of names that, that they have right now, but Peyton Pritchard is a guy that, granted, do I know if it'll happen? I don't know, but he just got paid, so he's he's um, there. I've seen some things that he's done um, in preseason. He might be a guy who might be in the six-man of the year conversation, not saying he'll win it, conversation um, this season. So, again, I just like what ball, I, I think this is the most complete roster and the – Yes, they have quote unquote some weaknesses, but I think this is the most complete roster. And also, for Boston, I just think it's time, bro. You've been doing this for seven years now, about seven, eight years now that they've been consistently good. I think it's time to actually get there. I mean, they've already been there. I think it's time to actually get there and you know try to actually for real, for real win it. So that's why I'm picking Boston. I'm gonna say this one last thing, and we'll go on to the next thing. Uh, all y'all, y'all bring your points. I'm not disagreeing with nothing y'all saying. It's just at the end of the game. When the fate of the world is on the line, I trust Damian Lillard more than I trust the nigga who's going to come in here with Kevin Garnett on his shirt and not play defense at the end of games. Say that Kobe talked to him in a dream, which would be which would be a lie. Kobe not talking to no Celtic in a dream. Let's just be 100% real about it. It's not going to happen. I, until that nigga actually shows up, and I do not hate Jason Tatum. I do. Until that nigga act, we know you do. I, I, I do not hate Jason Tatum. Until this nigga actually does it, I don't want to hear about it. I've seen Damian Lillard step up when the fate of the universe is on the line. Yes, so Drew Holiday. Arrested by Drew Holiday too. Yeah, that's fine. But guess what? If that happens, you got Giannis. So that's why I feel like at the end of the game, they're going to have the edge. I think if we're just talking about who has a better roster, I think I think the Celtics have a better roster by far. But at the end of games, it, what did Drake say for the dogs? I'm going with the dogs. And the dogs in this situation – it's Damian Lillard, man. Uh, let's go quickly into our sleepers before we actually talk about the games um, for, for tomorrow. Uh, Eastern Conference, Western Conference sleepers. Let's just each name like maybe a team or two real quick. Um, I'll start with what who I think would be a sleeper. In the, not, not really necessarily a sleeper in the East because I think the East is real top heavy. But a team that kind of, you know, eh, they might have a little thing. I'm, I'm kind of looking at the Brooklyn Nets just a little bit. Like they've got things that I feel like not saying that they're going to be a top five seed. They 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 could probably be you know a, a play in team, maybe even the last you know the sixth seed or something like that. But the way that Ben Simmons has actually been playing, you know, it looks like you know he I don't had know eight turnovers, dog. He, he had, had eight, eight, okay. eight turnovers, dog. That's, Nobody posted yeah, the rest of that line. Nobody <laughs> 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 that line. It's all do that fucking behind the back pad. Oh, Ben Simmons is back. He had eight turnovers in that game. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, what's this? You got Macau Bridges, you got Cam Johnson. I think this is a team that at least could be a team that I can see making the play in and actually have some sort of, of an uh, identity. Um, with the West, there's a couple teams that I look at as, as potential sleepers. My number one, obviously, is Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, I love what they've got. I love Shea. I love the, you know, we finally going to see Chet. This year, um, I, you know, so they, they've actually got their, their roster of teams that I feel like could be sneaky good a little bit. Um, I'm still – I'm not saying this team is going to make the play in or do anything of substance, but when Biyama enough makes me enough to want to add the Spurs to one of my league pass teams, man. So everybody else in that conference, I'm, we, we kind of know a lot about. So that's what I'm going to go with, with with my sleepers in the East and the West. Uh, as far as the East, bro, I don't know. They probably well, they're not gonna win a lot of games, but they're gonna be fun to watch. I tell you that. So one team I'm interested to see what they do is the Washington Wizards. They're not mm-hmm. gonna be on shit, but the Jordan Rose Ball Wizards off they, the little they, shit, bro. They dribbling, shooting all kinds. <laughs> they gonna be, they, it's gonna be all. It's, you know what it's gonna be like? G low key. It's gonna remind you a lot of them old Warriors with Monte Ellis, where they were just putting yeah. up everything. Yeah. Where they just putting up everything. That's everything. gonna be that type of vibe. So that's one team in the East and out West. Obviously, again, like you said, this is a team that's not really a sleeper. But honestly, if they stay healthy, I think the Lakers could do 
super damage this year. Mm-hmm. The Putting the Lakers as a sweeper is crazy. It, it is, but I mean, <laughs> based off everything that's happened the last three or four, based off everything that's happened the last few years, like we've like pretty much like my homies were talking like saying I was talking crazy, but. Bro, Braun has been hurt every year in LA. Yes, he like, really is. Every year. Hurt so, I mean, too, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's so, Martin Luther King Day come? That nigga foot start getting on fire. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, those, are, those are my two teams. Um, Scott, I fuck with the Nets pick. I fuck with the Nets pick because if, granted, if I, this is the, the biggest if of all time, but if Ben Simmons can return to form, we have to remember like Ben Simmons before he had his, I don't know what went on with him. He was probably one of the best defenders. My, my- yeah, Jammer left him, nigga. I wouldn't play no games either. She left me, nigga. I'll be out for the year. He was, he was one of the best spinners in the um, NBA and a um all NBA person. But my sleeper team in the East, I might sound the same for saying this. Dante, you're gonna laugh. The Atlanta Hawks. I don't think that they can actually win anything, but I do think this is a team that can win 45 games. Like, I mean, Trey Young. Like we get on Trey Young, but Trey Young has done a lot more than a lot of other people who we just not Luca. Wait, Trey Young has been to the same place as Luca. Let's yeah, not you, okay, okay. Look, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do, do no, the wide screen. Do the wide no, screen real quick. Hold on, talk no, about, talk about. No, Scott. What, 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 what no, no, Scott. No, don't hold up. Everybody think the fan no, is a fan. No, 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 no. The same questions we got about Luca. I didn't make the fucking playoffs, Dodgers, with Kyrie Irving. <laughs> We should Trey Young been to the same place. He went to college finals. Same time he made the playoffs last year and won a game against Boston. It did happen. And he didn't been working you. with and he didn't been working with about the same, sometimes less than Did what Luca been working team, with. Though. You taking Luke, you take him over Luca? I don't know. You you know the answer to that. You're no, not really taking him over Luca. No, 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 no. My, my, the reason I'm saying I don't know is because like Gee, Luca, like we 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 can't act like Luca Luke hasn't played with talent. I, no, no, I'm, I'm not, not, not awesome. We can't act like Luca hasn't played with talent. He's played with a lot of talent. We get to the point where it's like, okay, brother, it might be you. The reason why this don't work, it might be because you want to fucking dribble all day. So if you can't <laughs> score at sixty, we gonna lose. But but the Hawks, like they do have um Dejounte. They just paid a Congo today. Um, he's a guy that like I liked. I think he's a. I think eventually he'll take over that um starting center spot. I think Capella will be um shipped out. And the biggest thing for me is they have Quinn Snyder, who I mean Quinn Snyder in Utah. I mean you 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 you've seen what he did in Utah. Like yeah, he had yeah. the Jazz. There was a point in time I thought Jazz was going to the finals, and I still think that they would have beat the Clippers if fucking uh George Niang. I think it was Game Four. Wasn't out there. G. I think he was like a negative fifteen and played like fifteen minutes. <laughs> if that wouldn't have happened, I think they had a chance to actually beat the Clippers and maybe go to the finals. So my sleeper team to um, do a little bit more than I think what people are talking about is probably the Atlanta Hawks in the West. I got the Timberwolves. I mean, yeah. when you look at the Timberwolves, look at their it's roster. The what don't they season, have? Man. Nah, it's but like, 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 really, like, what don't they have? You have Jaden McDaniels, who is and. Let's keep it G. I think that they gave the Nuggets the best run for their money, and Jaden McDaniels was hurt. Yeah, like, yeah. let's keep it. They yeah, played. They played them better than the Lakers played them. Let's keep it all the way G. Yeah. So for me, and then you got Ant, right? Like Ant, everybody loves Ant. Everybody talks about Ant being this some superstar. I ain't necessarily seen it yet, but if we are gonna see it, this the year to see it. This the year for Ant to you know go up there. I think it's what year four for him now. If I'm, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's yeah, the year yeah, to go out there and supplant himself as, 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 as for sure. I mean, like, there's no reason why he can't be in the same conversation as Devin Booker when the year is over, or over Devin Booker when this season is over. You still have Conley, who, granted, I mean, Conley is a little bit older now, but he can still run a team. Rudy Gobert, he's not what he once used to be, but he's still a very, very good rim protector. And Cat, I know we all have our things about Cat, but Cat still 25 points, shooting 40 percent from three. Now, I don't mm-hmm. think he's going to be the guy that's going to lead you to, like, the uh, promised land, but he's still that. You probably had the best backup center in the um, league, Nas Reed. When you look at their roster, like, when you just put their first five on paper, that's one of the best first fives in the NBA. Yeah. yeah. They and Also, this team is going heavily in the um, luxury tax, and this oh, is in 100%. Minnesota. So it's yeah. time to win some games. Like, my sleeper team would be the Minnesota Timberwolves. That, when, when you just look at them on paper, there's no reason they shouldn't win 45 to 50 games. No, nah, I'm I'm rocking with that. I had the Wolves as my sleeper in the West. So I'll start off with the West. They're not really a sleeper, but I'm very interested to see their growth and what would be year two of them playing competitively would, would be the Sacramento Kings. We've seen all the go that they gave to the Warriors last year, and they really they really jagged that series. Um so I want to see how they how they take off this season, knowing that there's a target on their back. They're no longer they're not gonna sneak up on anybody anymore. 
So I'm really interested in seeing the Kings. And that, that's a team that I think that can actually get to a Western Conference final. The Eastern Conference side is slim pickings, how LeBron said. But <laughs> the Indiana Pacers are going to be my sleeper oh, team. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the Pacers. The Indiana Pacers are my sleeper team. Not to probably win some shit, but in year one with Rick Carlisle, 25 games they won. Last year, 35 games. Tyrese Halliburton is now a superstar and everybody – or a star – we can go any way, you know, any way about it. You can pick and choose. But Tyrese Halliburton is that guy. They added Bruce Brown. They added OB Toppin. So they, they're they going to be a fun team to watch. That's like my league pass team of the year. Every year I like to pick a team on league pass and I'm just going to fuck around and watch their trajectory. Vegas has them at like 36 and a half wins this year. So they're, they're basically where the Orlando Magic were last year. I think this is a team that could win maybe about 40, 41 games as long as they stay healthy. You have Benedict Matherin. You, uh, they picked up Jarris Walker. They got uh, Miles Turner. You got Halliburton. You still got Buddy Hill. You add Obi Toppin. So I think that's a I think that's a sneaky team to watch. And I think you know I think that they're definitely going to make some noise. And they're going to be a tough out. The Bulls can't see the Pacers on the schedule. I think it's going to be easy. The, the Celtics are not going to see nobody on the schedule. Right. Anybody, right. anybody, <laughs> anybody, 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 <laughs> anybody. But team, but teams are not going to be able to sleep on them because they will try to run you out the gym. Yeah, uh, you, y'all remember that uh video of uh of, of Rihanna um like throwing that money at uh, Stephen Hill at the, at the BET Awards like <laughs> me when I pay my league pass tomorrow. Um, let's 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 do uh, picks real quick and then we'll get Pavia out of here and we'll get into the local hour. Uh, so the first two games tomorrow, the first game, uh, the Denver Nuggets will be getting their NBA championship rings in Denver. They'll be opening against the Los Angeles Lakers. A uh, lot of lot of like you know the, the let's just say the, the the Nuggets been talking that shit this all season, rightfully so. In the words of future, you do what you want when you pop. You the champion. You talk what you want to talk. Uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron James have some problems with that. Not that I had a problem with them having uh, a problem with that, but you know, you niggas got to stay healthy. Uh, and then in the second game, we've got the Golden State Warriors going up against the new look Phoenix Suns. Man, we're just gonna go around the room uh, real quickly. Pavy, who you got in both games tomorrow? Um, I got the Lakers winning uh, the first game just because I think ring night can always be kind of tough, even though Jokic seems to not give a fuck. But I still think ring no, night no. can be can can still be kind of tough on teams. And also, I think that the Lakers will be a little bit extra motivated because of the noise they've been hearing. So I think that they'll win game one. Um, and in the second game, Draymond isn't playing um, because he's out with a sprained ankle. But I still think it's going to take some time for actually. Man, I still think it's going to take some time for Phoenix to get it together. So I'm gonna pick the Warriors to win the second game as well. Yeah, I'm gonna go Lakers in game one, and um, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with the Suns in game two. I think uh, no Draymond will you know that will be big be be, uh, be big. I think Kaminga you know he's gonna get some minutes. I don't know why Steve Kerr is like don't like playing, bro. But I think you know that's a guy who's put in the work and uh, he's you know he's trying to you know be a contributor to that team. But I think day one he won't be getting that much uh that much burn even with Draymond out. So I'm gonna go Lakers and Suns. Yeah, I'm riding with the Lakers and the Suns. Um, even though I think Jamal Murray, he's healthy now, obviously. I think he's going to give the Lakers some fists tomorrow. But LeBron's going to have that extra pep in his step. So I'm going to ride with the Lakers, and then I'm going to ride with the Suns because I'm not a Warriors fan at all. Uh, as y'all know, uh, me and uh, Steph Curry, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we, we were together in, in the light-skinned uh, team tandem over here. But I'm going to have to go against my guys. Uh, for this, so I'm gonna go with the Suns now because yes, no Draymond, that's a big thing. But also, as much as as long as even though we know it's gonna take the Suns a decent amount of time to get together in jail, who else is scoring points besides Steph tomorrow? Like, I mean, we don't know what the flip Clay might give 41 day. He might give you eight. Yeah, we don't. We really don't know what we gonna give him Clay anymore. And I'm definitely not giving nothing to that fucking State Farm agent who I gotta actually root well on this year. It makes me sick to my fucking stomach. Uh. I'm going to go with the Suns in that game. In the second and the, the first game, really depends on how the Nuggets come out. They come out still celebratory mode, got their rings. I think it's going to be an ass whooping. I'm going to take the Lakers by like 15 because LeBron got that fake motivational. No, everybody doubted me. I was number one draft pick 21 years ago. Everything I everything I did, I actually did. Everybody <laughs> doubts me. He going to use that shit. They going to win by like 15. He going to go on Instagram and act like they were like the fucking – like nobody thinks they're gonna do shit. 
So I'm finna log in. I'm about to log in right now. The fan doing take the nuggets, the wins. You know how it go, you know how it goes when all four when all four take yeah. one team. Like yeah, yeah, so they're gonna be talking about oh they're gonna have us up on Twitter tomorrow with Lakers logos and shit with the X over. It. Uh yeah, I'm going with the Lakers and the Suns in that one, man. So uh that concludes our nba coverage we'll have a lot more of course of this season we're gonna have a homie dick wise on on friday we'll talk about those games the rest of the season with him pav thank you for joining us as usual man uh let the people know where they get to you as you see at the bottom of the screen you can stream his new album the bachelor on all streaming platforms let them know where they get tuned with you um, y'all can find me everywhere on the internet at, at Pav world that's p-a-v-y world all one word um like you said stream the bachelor is out on every website that you want to stream music on and uh yeah appreciate you guys for having me on also uh dante will be joining us on summer sessions tomorrow uh so we're gonna have uh i don't know if merk will be there i know bang won't be there he had a family issue but at least be us three and we're gonna talk about pavi needs intervention we'll talk about it on the other one so all right g all right man appreciate y'all all right uh one topic before we go on not even a topic quick quick preview game seven american league championship series tonight uh, Houston Astros, Texas Rangers. Uh, Courtney is en route back to Dallas, Texas, and she's trying to watch the game. She's very hype about this. Uh, the last two games I thought very entertaining. Who you guys got tonight? How, how y'all see this going? Well, you know, they just announced that Ted Cruz will be in the building, so I have oh. the Texas Rangers. <laughs> uh, I mean, any, anything around that piece of shit cannot succeed. So, unfortunately, Dusty, uh, this, is, this is probably going to be the last hurrah. Uh, I got the Astros. I think uh, me and Mike, you were talking about it earlier, but I do think Mad Max has a throwback performance, and uh, I think the Rangers headed to the World Series. Yeah, I'm, I'm jumping on the Rangers, and I'm actually about to put that ticket in in a few. Um, I honestly think, you know, Christian Javier has, has been well. He, he's He's been pitching very well in the playoffs this year, but I remember the Christian Javier of all season where he was getting his shit lit up. I think this is a game where the Rangers jump out early and often, and they put some runs to try to cushion it. Hopefully we don't have to see, you know, any any late night drama for the Rangers, you know, as a, as a Rangers better. But I think the Rangers are going to take this. Something has to give. Uh, Bruce Bochy has never lost a game seven. Dusty Baker has never won a game seven. Mm. And the home team has yet to win uh, uh, a game this this series. So I'm going to ride with the train and take the Rangers. I am going with the motherfucking defending champion, Houston Astros. Uh, in the words of other Houston legend, Rudy Tom Jonovich, never underestimate the heart of a champion. In the, in the words of another icon, Ric Flair, to beat a man, you got to beat the man. And I don't see these niggas losing the game seven at home. I think that actually Max Scherzer is actually going to pitch well. I, I, I think he's going to actually pitch well tonight. I think it's going to be a pitching duel. But at the end of the game, I think we're going to get a late game, uh, either Jose Altuve or Jordan Alvarez uh, home run. And my nigga Dusty breaks the streak tonight. I'm going with the Houston Astros. It looks like right now we might have a game seven. I don't want to put too much. At the back. D-backs just scored again. It's 5-1, top of the seventh. It might be a game seven or all night in Philly. Uh, but I want to see the first World Series rematch since 1978. I looked at that setup over the weekend. First World Series rematch since 1978 between the Phillies and the Houston Astros. So that's who I got, man. So that concludes the uh, the national, uh, the main now. 